Yehovah Malak Olam Olamad Yehovah Malak Yami Rakes Yehovah Gadol Makarientios Kurios Tios Pantakreta Kurios Tios Pistos Yehovah Adonai Yehovah Elohim Monan Alatenian Tian Isus Christos El Daet Yehovah E. Basilian Kurios, O Tios, O Pantocrator. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling, this very great, unique, infallible and inerrant great word of truth glory be to my Yahweh Sidkenu to the highest and peace be unto the mankind on this earth to those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by faith alone in Christ alone and great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit one more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. In order to realize and understand the newness of the Spirit, what we serve, the Greek word kainotes, which has been used by Apostle Paul in Romans 6 4 in comparison with Romans 7 6, it states to us to reckon, to reign, and to yield in the newness of the Spirit rather than serving ourselves in the oldness of the letter. The power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what best it can make in this newness of life, how greatly it can change every, every man on this earth, provided when believers are turned out to become scribes. And that great powerful mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, could completely change the lives of these people, provided they are always in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, doing the will and the work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to the highest. We, the Church Age believers, haven't yet fully realized what is the powerful ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, why He has been given in us to be indwelled, why we have the great completed can of Scripture in our hands, why Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God, says in John 4, 24, Worship Lord God in spirit and in biblical truth. Lord God, the Holy Spirit uses nothing but the truth, taught categorically, isagogically, exegetically, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, iota upon iota, and carrera upon carrera. Apart from the truth, we cannot worship Lord God, the Father in heaven. Neither Lord God, the Holy Spirit, could use you if you don't have the truth. For a reason we read in Proverbs 19.2, that it is not good if your soul doesn't have the knowledge, the earth, and then it is what signifies the knowledge in Leviticus 8-9 dedicated as a Nazarite to the holiness of Lord God and in the standards of white hairs or, or hoary hairs or gray hairs that's a pure significance that these are the men of wisdom and this is what we look the crowns that have been given for us, we are just throwing it out, saying not used and worthless. It is not useful, but it is worthless for us. But Christ Jesus, our Lord of God, when He places turban upon the high priest, He is placing the turban upon the high priest, shining like the gold that is First Corinthians three ten through sixteen for us, and He is making our lives to understand that we have to be dedicated to the holiness of Lord God, growing up in the standards of Ephesians 4.24 in the new man, and Dikai Sunya Kai Hosiatis Te Salatia in the standards of Colossians 3.10 and 11. So dear brethren, what we have been given, the newness, 
Christ our Lord our God himself manifests what is this newness when he was being born in the spirit without the old sin nature. He is the end of all the revolution which is going to be further with such kind of a species where he demands being believing in Christ we have to grow up in such standards of true species in Christ that is called as qualitatively new in the spiritual terms. So this church age is not just like the men who were in the past right from Adam till to the last one in the Malachi or Christ Jesus our Lord our God ascended where we could look the standards of the day of the beginning of the Pentecost. But after the day of the Pentecost, the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, wherewith he prayed for us, he begged before God the Father to give every believer, he is talking something of a new creation, being born again in Christ Jesus our Lord. So this kinotes, where Apostle Paul alone uses in Romans 6, clearly describes now, we have to reckon, we have to reign, we have to yield. And these words are very, very essential for us. Because whenever we use the word kinotes, it has been said that we have to produce in us the effect of the life of true eternal life representing these people because without, if we do not represent in the powerful ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, that eternal life, these people will never come to know while they are here on this earth. Because we are going to enjoy right from the day to reign with Christ, Romans 5.17. And we continue that reign because of the righteousness inculcated to us, 2 Corinthians 5.21. But when we go back home, the unbelievers will never enjoy, never will come to know what was the life that we need to manifest to recount ourselves and to reign in the powerful ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and to yield ourselves to the instruments of holiness. Therefore, dear brethren, this new creation, what has been given for us, what we are termed out to be as kinekatesis. This new creation, what Lord our Savior Jesus Christ has kept for us, it is the end of all the revolution. And this new creation is the beginning wherewith he has set forth the ages to come one upon the another, the standards of his glory wherewith he is going to show forth us to be as a display to the people who have rejected this great grace. That's what Ephesians 2, 7 is all about. So dear brethren, when we have been called to such kind of a great newness of the Spirit to worship Him and to lead Him and to be led by Him to be called as the adult sons of His glory, then why is it we are not able to give our lives to be the earnest devotedness for His service? Many people forgetting Matthew chapter 7, when Christ Jesus our Lord our God says, Workers of iniquity, I do not know who you are, depart from me. This many people are not able to truly understand that the way how they fall, the, the way how they falsely fall into these miracles, healings, and signs and wonders, or casting out demons, in fact, indeed prophesizing, they never realize that they will be said, "Depart from me, workers of iniquity, because you haven't done the will of God the Father." And they are minimizing the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit for their filthy care of name and fame to serve in their lusts and not to serve Lord God in the newness of spirit. They are just using it to prove to these people who have been blinded not to become yet the scribes. In Matthew 13, 52, when we read something new that you have to get from old and new, he's teaching for us to go to the superior standards of the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in comparison to the Old Testament and the New Testament privileges given to you. And that superior privilege, what we have as Kainotes expressed in Matthew 13, 52, demands the powerful ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, operating in and around us. This is what we have been called. This is what we have to be something superior. And that superiorness doesn't come if you are not joined as a disciple and if you are not growing up as a grammatias in the church age. So, dear brethren, this calling what we have, this privilege what we have, is absolutely unique. Therefore, he says, for the pastor teachers, particularly beginning a warning. If you have the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, search diligently the word of Lord God and teach the truth. That's what he says for us in First Timothy chapter four, particularly in verse number six, and which we shall continue after this prayer. Use the prayers of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound. And let's learn the word of truth. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, 
Once again, coming into the grace, sanctifying ourselves to look upon the great and unique pile of wonders of the world which are prepared and kept and reserved and kept for us in eternity past. Understanding the word, kind of taste, Lord, help us to look what a life you have given to us and bestowed upon us. To make these people to realize the powerful mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what an effect it could have upon these people if they would truly believe and exercise to be the standards of holiness destined or dedicated to holiness and walking in your word, expounding in truth as your spirit, worshipping you in spirit and in biblical truth alone. To the section, Father, the things that are prepared and kept for us on today's date in spite of such kind of climatic conditions. We pray, Lord, this could be used for your glory and nothing else on that. And we ask your guidance on this, O Lord, so that our every thought could be agreeable for you. And according to the word, it could be acceptable and stand for the ages to come. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. So the things pertaining to Romans chapter 6, when we read, this is entire Christian life, what has been designed for us. But whereas we know very well, the man right from the beginning is always wicked. He doesn't love to take in simple words what has been given for them to perform in truth. Because these are the people who are not able to look what are the true standards when Christ Jesus, our Lord of God, grace has been bestowed so much. Grace is not a natural quality to man. As when Loth asks to one of the angels, asking that you have been favorable to me, Shan, and you are showing your goodness to me. Again, he's going to use the word Kasad. But yet this man doesn't say to go by carrying his cross and he wanted to say that, Lord, something evil will catch me up. The word catch is nothing but dabak in the Hebrew. Dabak is nothing but to have sexual intercourse, to become one with it, as becoming man and woman as one flesh. That's the word what he mentions, dabak, cleave unto me. When you say no to the work of Lord God, and when you say, I will do this rather than doing what Lord God has given, that meant to say, I've become one with such mission. And the resultant will be Matthew 7, wherewith you do miracles, you do wonders, you do healings. And you do go on saying, I prophesy. You have become one with that rather than becoming one with the will of Lord God the Father, wherewith he says, go and make disciples of all the nations, provided first you join as a disciple and grow up as a grammatias, and in the powerful mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, in mastering the 66 books as we read yesterday, it could be only 0.00001% to infinity, the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit being operated by this anthropology. The man is not able to use fully the 100% ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If not, he would be like Stephen, who wanted not to inculcate to them their sin, what they have done. He has seen the heavens open and seen right hand, standing at right hand of God the Father, my Christ, my Jesus, my Lord, my rock. You haven't come to be in such great possession of Lord God, the Holy Spirit yet. Though the Bible repeatedly says, Worship Lord God in spirit and biblical truth. Do not grieve, do not squelch, do not wax, do not lie, do not resist to the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Yet we are doing it because we are right from the beginning wicked, wicked, wicked. Therefore in Romans chapter 7, Apostle Paul says, I have sold in sin. Because we are the people, there is nothing good which dwells in us. The grace which is a natural quality of Lord God the Father in heaven, we don't, require, we don't accept it, we don't have it in us. Though much has been given for us and much has been expected from us and called us to be for the work of Lord God the Father to the highest in this church age, yet we are not proving for what we have been called in the church age. So in the same manner, when such kind of a grace was been bestowed upon Lot, he comes to give his opinion, saying that, Oh, not so, Lord. I will not go to the mountain, lest any evil could catch me up. That's not a word catch. It's called as Dabak, clear me up. That means so that I will become one with it. But Lord God the Father designed every church age believer to come to become as a grammatias or a scribe in the New Testament and do the work of a scribe developing the concept of Zechariah chapter 6 verses 12 and 13 for the kingship and the priesthood given to us. We are saying before Lord God the Father, not so Lord. We cannot go to carry our cross every day and become your disciple because any evil may catch me up. And you know what is that evil? Your ignorance. That's the greatest evil in the Christendom today for many believers. 
so many people they think just it's the standards of following the work of nominal Christians and never in following the standards of true Christians there are ample of people in and around the globe who develop their life in the standards of lies to be ultima but never they will come to realize what is the truth and that's what you and I should learn if we could go back and search where do you find today the word of Lord God being taught accurately where do you find today the great commission of my Christ has to be fulfilled Matthew 28 18 through 20 you don't find that any will any longer in our pulpits all have come for their own lustful patterns of the old sin nature to be fulfilled to the highest therefore we find over here for us that the man's heart is continually evil there is no good thing that is there in him though he has been said not to cleave to the world or to the surrounding places and ask Lord to go back to the mountain he says no Lord I will not slip away to the mountain Though we have been said to become disciples and grow up as grammatias, we say, no, Lord, we will not become disciples, neither we will come ourselves to become grammatias, daily carrying our cross, following you. And though the word says for us, it is not good that a soul should not be out, out of knowledge, but it is that the, the soul should have knowledge. But we say, no, Lord, we will keep our soul empty. And the world has been headed by such kind of a false pastor teachers who would say, quoting Hosea 4.6, not that the people are perishing without having knowledge in them and they want to say we are teaching them the knowledge how to cast away demons we are teaching them the knowledge how to do miracles and healings and not realizing in the completed kind of scripture for the word kainotes what are we in the powerful ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit and how Lord God the Holy Spirit can completely transform your life through the word of Lord God alone no gimmicks as the people are interested in gimmicks for miracles and healings but the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit always demands the word the word the word John 4 24 which teaches to us the time is going to come when they will worship in spirit and in biblical truth the indwelling controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit can produce worship to Lord God the Father only through the word of Lord God the truth without which it cannot aletheia the truth and these people they think what they are learning is truth and practicing is truth but they forgot what it has to be the kingdom of heaven Matthew 13 52 and they forgot what has to be the kinotes and they have come to their own level thinking what is called to be as truth it's a great pain in our heart when we are not able to confirm for Isaiah 53 1 when the word of Lord God says who hath confirmed our doctrine or the holy seed of Jehovah to whom it has been made or who have made it a gala exposition of the scriptures about this doctrine the doctrine that those who haven't seen will perceive and what is that we haven't seen what we haven't been counted as a scribe and what we do now we perceive to become as scribes of our scribes and train them up who has believed our gala exposition of this truth though we have the sperm of Christ and why do you think the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit has been given you have to confirm to the image of his dear beloved son that is my Christ my Lord my rock you have to come to the full major stature of his thinking And yet, who has confirmed the doctrine of Lord God? When Isaiah 53, 1, it says, The word report, who has believed our report, believed is nothing but confirmed. It is not just to believe, but apply in life. And the word goes on to say, who has confirmed our doctrine? What doctrine? The scribes. What every believer is all about, a scribe, every believer in the newness of Lord God the Spirit. What he has to be doing in the will and the work of Lord God the Father, who has confirmed it. That's what the words they have been recorded and kept for us, who has confirmed. We the church age believers are just spending our time to come weekly once to the church and spending our time to represent moral rituals like the past dispensation but not able to realize the power given to you to go and conquer the entire world wherewith he says the exusia authority what i had i gave for you 
so that you have to go and make disciples of all the nations and get back the glory that which is due to God the Father in heaven. We have forgot this work. We are still substituting cheap substitutions. We are not able to look the new creation. We are not able to understand this kind of ketesis through this flesh given to us when you have been born again and completely being controlled of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, using the privacy of our priesthood and to peripatao so that we can make our spear in the spear of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in doctrine and reign in truth. And do you know why? Though you have been cleansed in the positional sanctification to become holy. Those who have been called to be in your experiential sanctification day by day by putting to death the old sin nature, necrosate. Colossians 3.5 followed by Romans 8.13. We haven't put to death because we love the deeds of this flesh greater than what the word of Lord God ever demands through our lives. Do you know why these reasons, dear brethren? Because you pretend to be changed. But you know, inner man, you haven't been yet put to death. You haven't had your transformation right from your inner nature. You're proving only metaschematizoans. Where 2 Corinthians 11.4 teaches to us. Even the false angels will turn out to become the angels of light. But they're only outward transformation, but inward they are not yet. They are looking only outward, meta schematizoans. But the inward transformation demands Romans 12, 1, 2, and 3. To be a practical life to the work of Christ on this earth, it demands our inner reformation or inner standards of renovation. Right from your inner man, that's called as metamorphomai. And this metamorphomai goes on to with metanoio, to change your thinking right from your inner activities. And that will not happen till you perish out from your mind the human viewpoint. The human viewpoint is a translation, dear brethren. The human viewpoint is the wisdom of this world, the vain philosophy of this world, the reasonings of mind who have been already darkened, knowing not the way how to let out. But through Christ Jesus our Lord our God we have been given not just the glory we have been given not just the completed canon we have been even begged and prayed so that we have Lord God the Holy Spirit in us so that right from the old and new we have to produce something new which is to be like the master who created us. And yet we love not to become the new creation for Christ. Therefore dear brethren we find this word for us in Genesis chapter 6 in verse number 5. God saw, Ra'a, inspected and looked that the evil of man, Adama, was great. It is Rab, much many. In the inner man, that is Aretes, the earth in his soul. And that every imagination, the framing and the purpose behind that is of every imagination of the thoughts the whatever plan and purpose he has of his heart, lip, was continually or only, that is what altogether, it is evil, not agreeable, and that is continually every day. And that's what it is, continually in the sense, a day, a month or a year, which could mean today, yesterday, tomorrow, it could mean for a lifetime. And it has been used over here from sunrise to sunset till they could have breath in their nostrils. That's what Lord God the Father says for us. The whole imagination, even their purposes and desires, not only their imagination, even their purposes and desires, were continually, that is every day, every breath. This is what it is happening in spite of given to us this great mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit in the church age. Why? Because we haven't put to death the old sin nature, that's why. We haven't put ourselves crucified with Christ, Galatians 2.20. We aren't able to produce the responsibilities towards the church age, what we have been kept in this church age. What are the duties we have towards God the Father? What are the duties we have towards 
Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, conforming to his image. Paying the vast was of his great woe, we paid in Roman in Psalms chapter 22, verses 25 through 31. We are not understanding these woes. Greater the time we are spending, we are spending for our filthy care, for the patterns which absolutely train us up to look how wretched is this man right from his beginning. Therefore, in Genesis 6 5, he teaches to us what is man, because man has always been a re rebellion. And coming to Genesis 8 21, he says, And the Lord smelled sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Therefore, neither will I again smite any more every living thing, so that as I have done through the flood. That is what he says for us. Imagination, purposes and desires of man is always evil. Coming to Job 14.4, he says, Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? No, not anyone. What is that? The unclean is always a man conceived in the old sin nature. Or the result of that sin is conceiving. Therefore, he says in 15.14, What is man that he should be clean? Or he which is born of a woman that he should be righteous? Again in Psalms 51.5, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Or the things pertaining to the result of sin, I was being conceived. And the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? This is what a man is in the sight of Lord God. Such man he calls in the church age, given to them the power to become the sons of God in John 1 12. In comparison with Romans chapter 6, he says, the newness of life. Therefore, he says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that we are dead to sin live any longer therein? That's what he's asking a question for us. How can you be dead to sin live longer there? If a man is dead, what do you do? You just keep for two or three days till your relatives could come from far place and then you go to bury him. Don't keep him for more than three or four days, isn't it? Even when the resuscitation of Lazarus took place, it was a four days gap. They didn't keep him in the home. He was in the tomb. So, when we have been dead to the old sin nature, why we have to live as if we have been still alive to the old sin nature? That's what he's asking a question for us. Because if you are not serving in the newness of spirit, you are still grieving and squelching and vexing and lying and resisting the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, wherewith he wants in you the character of Christ to be confirmed and he wants to confirm to his image and he wants in you the mature stator of his thinking. That's what the old goal is. This is what a something new creation, what Lord God has made for us in the church age. The past, it was not having like this. It is what we have right now in the church age. Therefore, he says, Know you not that so many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death. That is meant to say for us, we are baptized into his thanatos, so that we... Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that, like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk now this word, kainotes. This is a new state of life in which Lord God the Holy Spirit placed in us to produce a new state which reflects every breath of our life, the eternal life quality. That's the newness. Therefore, he says for us to understand the quality of a spiritual one which is absolutely fresh, which is absolutely new, which was not there in the past, but now it has been given for us. Therefore, we have been born to worship Christ our Lord our God, to serve him or to walk in the newness of this Zoe life, the true life. And this newness is nothing but Lord God, the Holy Spirit being placed in you so that it can completely, dramatically change your life when you are heeding up to the word of Lord God and you are there here to honor his word above his name. That's what it has to be dear brethren. Why the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit has been given for us so that we could dramatically change in the powerful ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit producing as heavenly citizens on this earth. We have a citizenship into one new body. Ephesians 2.15 by the grace of Lord God. Though we don't deserve as Gentiles, said Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, redeemed us to become one, one into his body. Therefore, as he was been come into this world without the old sin nature, is having his wife, which is also of the same nature. 
Therefore, he says, before the foundation of the world, I have kept you to be holy and blameless for me. And since we have been kept apart, we have been called to set apart as a called out ones from this world, as the word ecclesia, to be called out, so that we could prove our hagiosis, so that we could enjoy the work of Christ, so that we could have to be born of bone and flesh of flesh of Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God, and serve him in the newness of this spirit, not in the oldness of letter. Therefore, Lord God, the Holy Spirit has been placed in you. It has been used only by Apostle Paul, these words, kainotes. Because he has to produce in you the life of eternal one, being placed in you in your human spirit. But you are not heeding the instruction to Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that it can transform your spirit, human spirit, and in return make your soul from human viewpoint into divine viewpoint. So he says for us, as Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God, was raised from the dead, so we have been crucified for the dead. Being resurrected, we have to serve in the newness of spirit, newness of life. This word newness is very, very unique for us, dear brethren. Even in the TDNT, volume 3, page number 474 through 490, I think, a beautiful long description about this word, kainotes. It should certainly prick your heart when you read those pages. Up to what extent this has been given for us in the information and how many people haven't even dig to read it. We have been something new. We are not like just the Old Testament. Far less you can live like a life of unbelievers. When Apostle Paul compares in Ephesians 5. We are not like a, in the we are not even closer even to the life of the Old Testament believers. We are something far higher and unique than the Old Testament believers. Far less we can walk in the vain imaginations of our mind comparing to the standards of the unbelievers in Ephesians 4, 17 through 20. That's what it is. We have been called to put on the new man. And there, very author, he writes for us. What is it? So much essential about this kind of taste. What is the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it can produce in us? If these things were been clearly explained by the pulpits, many people wouldn't be the same what they are today. They would be transformed themselves to look for the account wherewith they have been called to give to Christ. They would be really available to understand the purpose in Christ. They would wake up. If such kind of a powerful ministry has been bestowed upon us, why is it I am living like dogs and pigs? Eating your own vomit? Going for your own mire back? You would be completely transformed, you will be completely changed. But as long as you have been cleaving to reject the word of Lord God, as Loth says in Genesis 19, 19, something evil will cleave me up. You are cleaving yourself still to perform your miracles, healings, prophecies. But not to serve my Christ in the newness of the Spirit. You will pay for it. If you are not conforming to the image of Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God. If you are not able to realize if your soul doesn't have knowledge. God the Father says it's not good, I don't agree for it. Because he says about his soul. Even in Matthew 26, it is not just the physical pain which he has gone through, but the soulish mental agony what he has gone through. That makes the difference. If your soul doesn't have the word of Lord God for which cause he has purchased you, you will always serve still in the wholeness of your life. You will not come to the newness of this kainotes, wherewith you have been called to be the Lord's Zoe. So dear brethren, a point of a note for us. In 1 Peter 2.24, who says, By whose stripes we have been healed, Lord Jesus Christ suffered from the cruelty of men. But here we speak of infinitely greater suffering that he endured when forsaken by Lord God. But here we have been said in the church age, Do not grieve squelch, but rather be always controlled of the Spirit. If ever you live, you live in the Spirit. If ever you walk, you walk in the Spirit. If ever you have been walking in the Spirit, you march. 
because there is no way you can forsake like the way how Christ Jesus our Lord of our God was been forsaken by God the Father and Lord God the Holy Spirit on the cross for his fourth phrase Eli Eli lama sabatane we cannot be until unless you sin and yet you sin the privacy of your priesthood to come back and serve him in a dedicatedness of holiness to Christ but man is always evil every day his thoughts are evil but after believing in Christ you cannot come to be evil Therefore, infinitely greater suffering that he endured when forsaken by Lord God on the cross. Although he deeply felt the physical suffering with which men dared to abuse him, those sufferings did not compare in the least with his agony of being judged by God for our sins. It was not his body that bore our sins, but he bore our sins in his own body on the tree. That suffering was not merely physical, but it was felt in the depths of his soul. Because in Isaiah 53.10 we read, in words referring to God, when you make his soul an offering for sin. And if your soul doesn't have that knowledge for which cause he has paid it on the cross, then there is no meaning of his sacrifice on the cross. Therefore, he says, the soul should have knowledge. Therefore, he says, for us in the church age, every man should come to the thorough knowledge of Lord God's glory by renovating your standards of your thinking to the fullness of Christ. Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. That's why the bona fide work of the pastor teacher it is not the period of apostles or prophets or falsely where they are using the work of evangelism, but not preaching them the gospel and getting them back to Christ to make disciples or grammatias, but rather inculcating millions and trillions of people by their false gimmicks of miracles and healings and dealing with them with the casting away of demons that's what these people they are they think they are really doing evangelism no the evangelism work is go to spread the good news give them the gospel when they believe in Christ give them to the pastor teacher because Isaiah 53 10 teaches to us it is his soul that was offered the two deaths what we read Thanatos and the Necros here one of the things for us the things pertaining to the Thanatos the two deaths the translations they are missed it out so here he says in Isaiah 53 10 that when you make his soul an offering for sin that's what first he says father into thy hands I dismiss my spirit but prior to that, he said, Tetelestai, the physical death. And then when he completed to pay in full in his physical body, now he's submitting his spirit. And therefore he says, he offered his soul for a sin. And furthermore, he goes to teach. The soul is the center of an emotional being as illustrated by Lord's words in the Garden of Gethsemane in Matthew 26, 38. My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. In those innermost depths of his soul, he felt the supreme glory of being forsaken by God. But this was the only way that we could be delivered from our guilt. And when he has paid such kind of a ways for us that we could be delivered from our guilt, and if he had poses in our soul no knowledge of Bible doctrine, then do you justify the death of my Christ on the cross? You want only the outward appearance for your salvation of your eternal life. But you don't want the kinotes to operate in you. You don't want Latgar, the Holy Spirit, being placed in you to produce in you the great and unique and true character of Latgar, the Holy Spirit of eternal life. We are just interested to take our salvation viewpoint, not in the viewpoint of completely transforming our soul. You believe in Christ for your eternal life, that's what you say, but your soul? But Christ Jesus of our Lord of our God paid in full so that even your soul could be transformed. Therefore, in the church age, the emphasis renew and have according to the thinking of Christ. Renew your mind so that you could be like Christ. This is the emphasis for us, learn complete doctrine. We are not serving yet in the oldness of the letter, we are serving in the newness of spirit. Because we are after Christ's manner. As Eve came out from Adam, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. So the church age has also been crowned with flawless and great lights. Leviticus 8.8 8, To serve him in spirit and in biblical truth. Comparison to Ephesians 4.24 
And we have also been given crown of glory. Hebrews chapter 2. And that turban what they kept in Leviticus 8, 9 signifies the shining of a sprinkle of gold. Purity, 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 16, gold, silver, precious stones. And then they have been given as a dedication, like Nazarites would be dedicated themselves to holiness. But are we doing this part? Are we dedicating our lives to become the disciples of my Christ? Are we truly working out the work of Lord God the Father and His glory, though He has paid such kind of an agony in cross? He just not only redeemed you, for which you may think, your physical sickness, but He has paid for you in full about your soul sickness as well. Your soul will have sickness because your human spirit given to you at the moment of salvation is not being taught by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the Word of God. And why the Word of Lord God is not being taught by the Holy Spirit, your human spirit? Because you are not in fellowship with Lord God, the Holy Spirit. When you are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, He will lead you unto all the truth. That's the right work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. It will make you to first learn, Lord God, the Word of God and make you to realize that there is a garbage in your soul which you have to cleanse. By that it meant to say, the old sin nature, 1 Peter 2, 1 and 2. In every mannerism of cult, in every mannerism of lies, in every mannerism of hypocrisy, everything, whatsoever it is. They have to be washed out. If you are not being washed out, you cannot drink the sincere milk of the word of Lord God. You have not been born again yet. So, if you are still grieving and squelching, remember this point, dear brethren. You are not acquiring the knowledge of Bible doctrine. That meant to say you are still grieving and squelching. That's the purpose of the church age. It's not miracles, healings or going to say temporary elevation of your sufferings or having your experiences to be that you have been in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit by some visions or trance. No. You have now only one thing to understand. The word of Lord God, the newness of Lord God, the Holy Spirit given to us to worship Him in spirit and in biblical truth. This kinotes, which we need to crack. Not just moral lessons, not to go back and say, don't do this, don't do that. The seriousness of your adult sons calling in the church age to be huyos. From Technon, every day carrying your cross and growing up to become yours. Because the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of you adult sons. So that they could come back and learn. Being delivered out from the bondage of such sins. But you are still emphasizing upon your flesh healing. You are emphasizing much upon your emotional patterns. But you are not truly em emphasizing that even the soulish patterns, what he has paid for you, he paid it as an offering to fill your soul with the word of Lord God, the mechanism through Lord God, the Holy Spirit, activated in your human spirit, being taught by the pastor teacher every day, who is a male, bona fide, spiritual, gifted one, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, iota upon iota, and carrera upon carrera, and letting you to realize the work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and transform your soul to be filled with the doctrine of the the mind of Christ. What is the length, the breadth, the height, the depth of the word of Lord God to be in you? So we are absolutely inexcusable, dear brethren. This is the mechanism given for us. So that he paid in full even for your soul to be given complete knowledge. If not, you wouldn't have further revealed for us, saying that confirm to the image of his dear beloved son, Romans 8. You don't have given for us the standards to, to put in Ephesians 4, 11 through 13 that is called for us that catarismos process. When you're taking into that process every day, you have to produce in you the catarismon things. Why would he give those things for us? As the way in Galatians, in Acts chapter 15 we read, we ourselves couldn't bear the yoke that has been kept upon us through circumcision. Why is it we need to pay that yoke upon these new, new upcoming believers? If they wouldn't follow such and such things, it's just free for them. And don't make it compulsory binding about the circumcision, they let go. The same principle for us. Wherewith Lord God the Father teaches to us. You have been called to serve my Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God, in the newness of His Spirit. Not in the oldness of the letter, it is not rituals. 
Galatians 6, 12 and 13 teaches to us. They thought just going for circumcision is enough, but not taking up your cross every day, coming to Christ and understanding the word of Lord God to renovate the standards of your thinking. The same principle is applied today in our pulpits. Many people have forgot the right and the clear burden of my Christ. Many people. Rituals have become more. The agony of your soul which has to be filled with the knowledge of Bible doctrine. If you don't have in your soul the knowledge of Bible doctrine, your physical body will yield for sins and sickness. When you have been led with such sickness and sin, quite obviously you will have your mind for miracles and healings. Where there is sin, there is sickness. They go hand in hand together. And you may think I am pure, I am not doing any sin. Becoming not a scribe by joining as a disciple itself is a major sin. You may calculate sins like prostitution, adultery, fornication. Worse than that is your mental attitude sins and disobeying the word of Lord God not to fulfill the great commission of my Christ by becoming to perform the will of God the Father. And every believer being called to be a saint. Every believer being indwelled by Lord God the Holy Spirit. Every believer has been given to understand the newness of the Spirit. Wherewith you serve in the Zoe life, the true life in Christ. And yet you want to talk about the moral things. Yet you want to purify them not to do this, not to do that. What do you think the church age is all about? Do you think it's like the piety aunts? No. The church age is the adult sons of glory. Huyos. That demands time by every believer to take in the word of Lord God. That takes the time to preach. That takes the time to mouth them up. That takes the privilege for them to be always in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So that you can be like Stephen. So that you can make even Paul to believe when his heart was moved. By the prayer being prayed by Christ Jesus of our Lord of our God. And that takes time, dear brother, and it doesn't happen in an overnight. As people are thinking, having a vision and glory, they are becoming in an overnight the things pertaining to their life. But daily carrying your cross, following my Christ, Apostle Paul himself took three years in Arabia to transform. And that to every day, being minding about the things of God the Father, his category one and two love was towards Christ. Because the category to love, though he was eligible to marry a sister, he wasn't because he didn't have time to spend in these earthly relationships of marriage. So his category one love towards God and category two love was always to God the Father. So there was nothing new in that. So that he could waste his time because he was on a serious mission. Because he alone would come close enough to talk about Romans 6, 4, Kainotes. He alone teaches to us that what Christ Jesus our Lord of our God had, He gave the same thing for us being purchased with His own blood and water. Blood representing cross, water representing the word of Lord God. And He wants us to be sanctified and kept apart for His work to the highest in the church age. But at what are we performing today, dear brethren? If we would search diligently what we are, if we would examine ourselves diligently what we are. We are not having that great devotedness to Lord's work. We don't even bother about it. We are not even having that zeal and wholehearted devotedness in the service of Christ. Because they are thinking, let us be in the magnitude of our life to serve the Lord and not in the reality of the word of Lord God. It's a very, very poor thing to be occupied with ourselves in our own ways and our own works, dear brethren. But if our ways and our works are not what they ought to be, wherewith we must be occupied in Christ, then we must judge them according to ourselves. In the prophet Haggai, he calls upon the Jews and says, Consider your ways. What kind of taste you have to be and what you are living. Your thinking neos is enough, but not. You are being called to be kinotes, the new man. You are being called to worship Lord God in spirit and in biblical truth. 
Therefore, when the prophet Haggai cries out, consider your ways. Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, says to each of the seven churches in Revelation 2 and 3, I know their works. And there is a great danger of resting satisfied with our knowledge, our principles, our position. While at the same time, we are walking in a carnal, worldly, self-indulgent, careless spirit. Therefore, we have to look if it is something new in the church age given for us. Something kine he requires in Matthew 13, 52 when he uses the word that we get something new from the old and new together. Something of a spiritual quality which did not exist earlier but now we enjoy it. Something which we need to manifest by becoming to grow up as Christ. Something to honor Lord God's word above his name. Then we cannot be still occupied in the standards of denominational teachings, what these people they think, let us mold them for morality. But an unbeliever in my country, India, to tell you more specifically, is hundred times far more superior than a believer is going to go to heaven, though he goes to hell. Do you know why? The moral standards of unbelievers are great. The virtue and the integrity, even the standards of our rulers of this country, beginning with Modi, they stand for the integrity of their word. In spite of the political disturbances, what they have in the politicking, this is a man of his word. He, he, he sticks to his word. And he's yet an unbeliever. So this is what we look. They are great. The unbelievers are going to go to hell without believing in my Christ. They are morally superior. They are morally great. They could mean something greater than an average believer who thinks he's great. They follow almost all the standards of the Bible to look. Being faithful to one wife. Being loving the brothers as their own. That's why we find in my country, India, many undivided families yet to be as one big family because they love each other still. Not nucleated families. And my country, India, is great. It's culture, it's morality, it's discipline. Though not having knowledge of the word of Lord God, not having the light of Lord God, they're not able to look the real word, yet they have in their Puranas the things pertaining to their life. But even in those Puranas we go back and look, representing my Christ. Even Swami Vivekananda, the world famous man, was a follower of the imitation of Christ, the book written by Thomas Kempis. And this man says in his volume 5, page number 500 of Nanjadipa, if I had been born at the time of Christ, I would wash his feet with my blood, because there is no further ones than Christ for our salvation. There is no further ones than Christ for our wisdom to live the life. If it is not by the name of Yahovah, we couldn't come to know what is the revolution to mankind. And here the church is worrying about to make believers to become morally good. Christians have not called for moral standards. They have been called for virtue. They have been called something to manifest to this world. The greatness what we find every day when we become kinotes principle being placed by Lord God the Holy Spirit. This new life representing the eternal life standards in this earth. Consider your ways where you stand. Though being called to be great and good servants of the Most High Lord God, living true Lord God. What you are witnessing in the midst of these unbelievers. We are we superior than the Old Testament saints. But the way you walk by grieving and squelching, calling yourselves to be Christians. You are much more inferior than these unbelievers. You don't even match to the moral standards of these unbelievers. And yet you think you are serving my Christ. Dear brethren, you need to be very alert. The newness of the Spirit, what has been given to us, wherewith we have been called to serve Him in spirit and in biblical truth. It demands us every breath of our life to consider our ways. It demands in every life we are always being sinners. But yet it is Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God, who pays. 
for us every breath renewing in our lives if you are alive tomorrow to carry your cross and follow my Christ because it is you who is going to renew day by day his mercies for us therefore he says for us in Romans chapter 6 the true standards of his glory which has been given for us which we need to enjoy which we need to perform he says as Christ Jesus was been dead and raised so as such we are dead now to the old sin nature and we are now alive to the newness of the spirit therefore he says for us for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection or rising up anastasis but the thing is have we been planted together in the likeness of his death the word the things pertaining to have been is nothing but ginomai or have you become or you come to pass therefore have you been planted together meant to say sumfutes that is being joint origin or grown together in the likeness of his death so what do you call about his death thanatos what did he do while he was alive on this earth he was born in the standards of Lord God the Holy Spirit right from his birth through virgin birth and he was dead to the old sin nature so here in simple terms he says like Christ Jesus our Lord our God even if you are dead to the world by touching it not tasting it not neither handling it even he will be risen in the resurrection of his likeness but that we meant to say the day you begin to believe in Christ from the day itself you reign with Christ there is no more power of the old sin nature in you there is no more agony in your soul because your soul is now transforming from human viewpoint to divine viewpoint because you fulfill the commission of my Christ by becoming his disciple to carry his cross every day and follow to be with Lord God the Father to the highest that's the very simple work what we have in simple words if you have been dead in the likeness of his death you will be risen in the likeness of his resurrection but the question arises are we truly dead according to the likeness of his death that's what even you and I should answer and judge ourselves as long as we still have the old sin nature the deeds of the flesh operating in us it will be as good as marrying to a wife there's a constant pain in your neck as Proverbs 24 14 teaches to us rather than finding a good wife and finding the right son of role of the Lord God because in Proverbs 8 22 he teaches to us finding a good wife is carrying your cross every day following my Christ to become one of his disciple on this earth so that he could find in the church you in Proverbs 24 14 like a brawling wife with constant pain in your neck what life you are going to have with her Christ our Lord our God doesn't want you to be there in those terms he wants you to be found by him he wants to produce in you a character of Christ he wants to develop in you the new kinotes though he has kept the church age being redeemed and he calls in 1st Corinthians 2 6 and 7 communicating this doctrine among them that they are mature then we should be the people to really understand are we producing in us the kinotes character of his wife which he is seeking which is loving to dedicate ourselves to his pleasure of holiness and wisdom so that we could deal with him in his standards of righteousness are we really looking in those terms or yet we are still finding ourselves to be the wife like Proverbs 24 14 which talks about who could stay with such wife like a roof being sprinkled every day leaking out the water every day we come to give you the wisdom of Christ in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit you reject you are answerable to Christ not to us we are not here to morally transform you because you are called to be virtue you are called to be the light to the world you are called to be the salt to the earth 
You are called to shine like the light luminaries in the midst of this powers and crooked nation generations. You are called here not to heed the instructions of these people who are already blinded and spiritually dead without believing in my Christ. You are called to be a light and guide for them to know what is the truth in Christ. And yet, dear brethren, many people who love not to follow the words of the Lord God, will not die the likeness of the death of my Christ so that they can have the likeness of the resurrection of him what you sow that he will reap if you sow to the flesh you will reap death if you sow to the spirit you will reap life but these people haven't come to look in those times dear brethren the things pertaining to these words in Romans chapter 6 if you don't come to reckon, if you don't come to reign in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, if you don't yield up, you're going to lose many things on this earth. Because He hasn't delivered you from the bondage of sin called as death. He has delivered even your soul so that it shall not be empty without the knowledge of Christ. And that soul should transform now from human viewpoint to divine viewpoint, daily taking in the word of Lord God. You look for your solution to the flesh, eternal life, then what is the solution for your soul and spirit, not reaching to the standards of His glory, what He has given, trusting you, His soul. And that great mental agony, what we offered in His soul, says Isaiah 53.10, for His students. So that we can have a greatness of life the length of our life to be always in truth and in spirit to enjoy in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit in truth and greater we reject to be in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit by loving the world greater you're perishing yourself therefore those who love the world their enmity with christ here it's no longer serving the Baal God or the gods of Ashtaroth. But here, the world and the God. Is it Christ or the world Antichrist? Against Christ, the world which is ruling by the prince of the power of this air. If you love my Christ, he says, keep my commandments. He calls us to be something great, to be his friends. Though in Proverbs 18.24 he says, A friend which sticketh closer, that is again the word the bark, clear, to become one. To be one. In the same manner, he wants these friends also to be one. By fulfilling his mandates, John 15.14, 15.13. 15, Whatsoever he mandated us that if we do, then only we are his friends. He didn't ask us to give our life as a martyr or die in such and such foolish way. He calls us to make disciples. He calls us to join as disciples and grow up as grammatias. He calls us to be something new because we are his wife. And when we are his wife, when Lord God, the Holy Spirit can dramatically change your whole life, and fill it with the glories of the glorious heaven. Then why are you using your mouth not to plant the things of heaven? Why are you using your mouth not to once again put into foundation on this earth the standards of the teachings of Christ? Why are you not using in these terms? What is that that is wrong in you that is leading for you to become a failure? The only thing which is, dear brethren, your ignorance. Ignorance is your greatest enemy. And some pastor teachers, they find arrogance to be their greatest friends. Because they don't want to change their lives. They have established, they don't want to correct their teachings. Don't worry, what you sow that you will reap. You are not answerable to me. Who I am so that I could listen to you. Or what facts I have about you concerning so that I could talk about you. That God the Father gave in Isaiah 42 that right from the womb we have a rebellion to Christ. 
In Genesis 6, 5, he says, every day your purposes, your plans and your imaginations are always evil. That's the testimony it will be about every man. But those who believe in Christ and transform themselves every day by renovating the standards of their thinking, they will be the friends of Lord God because they love to do what he has mandated them to do. They will not wait for anyone. They will not wait for anyone. Therefore, the phrase for us given, if you don't hate your own life, you are not worth for me to be as a disciple. Far less you think, you love your brother, sister, father, mother, wife, children. He says you have to love your, you, you have to hate your own life and love the commandments of me. And yet, dear brethren, how many things are there yet for us to expound in the word of Lord God? And yet how many people are still not being dead into the likeness of his death? Romans 6, 5. So he goes further, says, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that is, sustauro, to crucify alone with Christ, that the body of sin might be destroyed. That is what we are. The body of sin has been destroyed. Katargeo, to render idle, unemployed. You are not any longer engaging in the body of your sin. That henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. And knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over us, that is for the flesh. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. That's the power of his word. And now he says for your soul, likewise rakan, the word logizomai, to recount or compute or to become like a scribe. You yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive zoe unto Lord God through Christ Jesus our Lord. And let not sin therefore reign in your flesh or your mortal body, that you should obey it and the lust thereof. Neither yield you your members as instruments of righteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments as righteousness unto God. Therefore here he says, first, Rakan, Logizomai as a scribe. Second, let not the Basilion work of reigning could be happening in you to exercise the flesh, but rather yield, yield, yield. The word yield is again for us paristemi. The word is a combination of two words which is taken from para besides and then the word histemi. And the word histemi is again taken from the word thithemi. And we read this word thithemi is nothing but to kneel down. Therefore, to master your flesh, the work is always to kneel down in his presence where Christ Jesus our Lord our God taught for us that the soul is ready but the flesh is indeed weak and he goes a step further kneels down and he prays to God the Father Father if it is thy will but not my will O Lord thy will be done so here we find Rakan to become like a scribe not to see that the flesh is having or the sin is having any rule over your flesh but to go for yield para histemi histemi taken from the word again titemi that is be in the standards of kneeling in his presence and master your flesh that's what the word is for us. So dear brethren, the newness of the spirit demands you become a scribe, to recon, to count. It also demands to become a scribe by kneeling down in his presence. If it is possible, kneel down and write the word of Lord God. If it is not, at least in your lifetime, read once in your knees the word of Lord God. So that you could be the work of his glory to the highest. And yet, dear brethren, we have many things to learn about the word kainotes. Today there is a lot of breeze and I do not know how much of you all might get this word. But make it sure to listen to the word of Christ because we know always that it is his word that shall reign in spite of all the odd infinite circumstances that go against his will. Therefore, we have to come to obey his word and do his will because the work that is given for us in the standards of kainotes is something great and unique than compared to the standards of, in fact, indeed, before the completion of the canon or not able to realize to become the scribes. Even in this church age, we find the differentiation between mature and immature believers. So we talk about immature believers. Before them or prior, prior to them, the Old Testament saints, prior to them, the world. So this is how the logic goes on. So we are superior than all the human creation being made, given to us to become kainotes, to represent my Christ to the highest. So dear brethren, 
which way you want to go you decide we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of his glory in his grace so with our head bowed and eyes closed the closing moments be dedicated to those who are without Christ without hope and without eternal life believing Christ in the privacy of their soul to God the Father when they express this this words they will definitely get their eternal life so that they could new now they walk in the newness of life for the believer it is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine for the pastor teacher is Caruso Thon Lagan herald the word in season or out of season because of the dire martyrs my witness was given to them and what he has to herald the great use of beyond spiritual life which has been dedicated for us even in first timothy chapter 4 verses 6 through 8 teaching to us the use of beyond spiritual life so dear brethren we are having witnesses besides nature the entire angelic host what is our work to rightly divide the word of truth no matter however the chips may fall so which way you want to go dear brother and you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow Infinitely Divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is for us to have fellowship through the Word. Father, we pray for this concept of kainotes, which are given for us to be developing through Lord God, the Holy Spirit in us, producing the character of eternal life. Help us, Father, to manifest fully and perfectly, so that the creation wherewith you have called us to be the kainiketesis in the church age should be used for your fullest glory of all time. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.